Okay, are we ready? <clears throat> All right. In three, two, one, go. Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us again under the library. This is the show where we play Call of Cthulhu, record and post it. Hopefully for your enjoyment. Tonight we'll be continuing season two of our homebrew campaign with one major difference. This is the first episode of Under the Library without Emily. My name's Arthur. I'm playing Franny. Scott uh, is playing Culligan. Chris is Boone. Rick is Bellow. Wayne is Rutherford. And of course, as always, our keeper is Michael. We're going to do things a little differently tonight. We usually go to Michael and then to Emily's recap. But in Emily's absence, we have a recording of her recap of last week's episode, which is here. Well, this will be an interesting experience doing the summary without any heckling. So as we began last week, Dr. Gardner arrived and initially seemed reluctant to care for the seemingly insane chicken man. Eventually she relented and Levine ordered everyone out of the theater lobby while Joe snuck into the theater during the confusion. Franny offers to stay behind and assist the doctor. And as they work, Bello tries to sell the doctor on a greaseless chicken franchise. Dr. Gardner takes a syringe and hands it to Franny as Bello is babbling at her. The doctor motions to Franny to give a shot from behind as she distracts Bello and has him follow a tongue depressor with his eyes. I should note that Franny injected a palpable thigh. After the injection, Bello is blurry but conscious. He has visions of his father taking a bat to the chicken coop, among other things. It seemed to be pretty traumatic for him. Now, Dr. Gardner steps out to get some more supplies, and she returns with a large apparatus that she wants to use to draw blood. Franny notices that the apparatus is labeled the Rumsford, and she quickly draws a connection between this device and her great uncle, inventor Harold Rumsford. Dr. Gardner says that Franny is of an incredible lineage. She seems, she seems very impressed, very surprised, and she offers to Franny that she can stop by the office to talk anytime. And her whole demeanor sort of changed in that moment. As the doctor leaves the building, Holly stops her to speak, and he reminds her of the broken arm, of Bello's broken arm that she never treated. Dr. Gardner claims that she's getting supplies to come back and tend to his arm, but she is very unconvincing. Cully re-enters the lobby and shares his doubts about the doctor with Franny. And at the same time, Rutherford and Boone find Cully and tell him about the suspected government abduction that they witnessed with the man being forced into the dark colored car. Rutherford then remembers Dick talking about being instructed to design his buildings to prevent escape. And then they wonder, is Dick being held in one of his own facilities? Rutherford sees a great government conspiracy and now imagines that it even includes Dr. Gardiner. While all of this is happening in the lobby, Jo has been in the theater. She sneaks through the theater and while the staff is distracted cleaning, she sneaks onto the stage and then backstage. She sees light coming from a room and hears two voices that she recognizes. It's Lana Pere and Caspar himself arguing. It seems that Lana is unhappy with the way she's treated. She feels underappreciated, generally very grumpy. Jo moves on, doesn't want to disturb the voices and be discovered herself. And she moves around to the house left side of backstage. She discovers a six inch pipe coming out of the backstage stairs and then running into the wall. Seems like this pipe may be delivering the purple mist that she saw in the house. At this point, 
she is in full dark and can't accomplish anything else, so she sneaks back out, but as she moves across the stage, finds a deck of cards, perhaps the deck that she used when she assisted Kaspar in his act. She takes it as a souvenir and leaves. And that's all I've got. Wow. Emily, with the amazing recap from afar, and even with a, a dick joke thrown in. Very, very well done. It was well played. So with that, we're going to start the show. Michael, it's going to be all yours. All right. And thank you for joining us. Uh, under <laughs> the library <laughs> is a tabletop role-playing game set in the Call of Pretty Cthulhu good. universe. Seconds plus. Yep, I'm going to get it one of these days. And as such, has themes of horror, such as bodily dismemberment functions and cannibalism, and and as jokes. well as, yeah, any other sort of immature uh, jokes on mature themes that you can imagine. Well, wow, I'm just Nailed bundling it. this one left and right. Maybe, maybe like Emily, you should tape it and then just, uh, just lip play sync it. it. I can play week. it for you. Yeah, you, <laughs> you could just open and close your mouth and pretend, <laughs> pretend you're saying When in it. doubt, just keep repeating be, six yeah, inches of pipe. No, six yeah, inches of pipe. Behind the microphone, <laughs> and we won't be able to see your, your mouth. <laughs> Essentially, these assholes make fun of me, and I try to kill them. <laughs> and that's what we do for the next hour. Hope yeah. you join us. And uh, with that, and I can't turn it over to Emily because she's gone. <laughs> so... <laughs> I guess we just get started now, right? That's it. Okay. All right. That's how we do this. <laughs> yep. Okay. Now we play Call uh -huh. of Cthulhu. Um, what's that? Now we play Call of Cthulhu. Oh, yes. This will be fun. Yeah. So uh, uh, what I wanted to do, first of all, is uh, Mr. Poulet there. Uh, I understand that he lost five hit points. So that's oh, got to yeah. be, that, that's gotta be, correct me if I'm wrong, a major injury, huh? You know, compared yeah. to his total hit points. So there's no way he, he's, you know, feeling spry as a spring chicken. Uh, well, and I, I do know Hobo. Hit point. Oh, I wasn't trying to throw him under the bus. I was just saying that uh, he needs some help and I can use Hobo medicine maybe to uh, get him some health back. Yeah, that sounds good. Bella, what's your total health? 14. <clears throat> what's that? Uh, 14. Oh, so oh, he's okay. got some serious internal injuries. <laughs> he may think he feels what? good, but whoa. <laughs> Lord. That was such a good accent. <laughs> Four time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go over there, and uh, he's still sort of like semi conscious, if I remember right. Hey. So I'm going to go over there and see if there's any. Uh, uh, zippers or buttons so I can get access to uh, <laughs> the skin underneath. See what we're uh, dealing oh. with there. Okay. Um, I think we, I, we we went through pretty thoroughly last week how the chicken costume is attached to Mr. Poulet. Uh, so why don't you just uh, you do your best and describe how you're uh, taking off his wing. Describe okay. It, uh, describe it really slowly. I so <laughs> step, <laughs> so. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> step into the costume. No costume. Okay. Well, I uh, then uh, undo mm -hmm. the costume and uh, try to take it from the the neck downward, so at least uh -huh. I free up his arms and uh, uh, torso. What if I, don't care, is, I don't care. I don't care to see anything what if uh, below it's not that a costume point. And you skin them alive. That's what I was hoping for. <laughs> I was hoping. I was hoping the keyboard. I would thought say, you no, were. There's no buttons <laughs> or zippers, and then I was all prepared to go. I look under the feathers. Is there cloth there or skin? <laughs> as but, you, uh, yeah. As you, as you start to pull down the costume, uh, Bello screams out in excruciating pain oh, as if he's being uh, skinned <laughs> as as wow uh, wow 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 <laughs> oh wait actually uh, on that Were you note, trying I to do actually, grape lady 
Yes. <laughs> nailed it, Rick. You nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Bellows, Bellows drugged, if I remember correctly. Yes, Bellow is drugged. Okay, so maybe he doesn't scream out in such excruciating pain. Maybe he just moans as his eyes roll back in his head a little bit as you juggle that uh, that broken wing, I mean, arm bone. Are you, you going to role play that? Yeah, so uh, he's I'm- broken wings. <laughs> Take these broken wings and fly. Are you? Are you? Chris is trying to move on so that that doesn't happen. Yeah. So, so, uh, Papa, Papa, what are you doing? No, so, so, so go ahead. Papa, go ahead. Papa, don't preach. <laughs> Papa, ooh, mau, mau. Papa, ooh, mau, mau. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> no. All right, keep going. Any song that has Papa in it. Oh, you're, taking, so, you're taking off his, his costume. What's what's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm looking for um, any, what, like subdural uh, hematoma something. I'm a hobo, uh, for fuck's sake. Uh, I don't have the terminology. I'm, I'm looking for uh, deep bruising. Yeah, uh, so all, all down his side, you can see where he's been stepped on. But uh, more apparent, what's causing him the most discomfort is that left arm. Uh, oh, particularly, okay. What, what's that bone? An ulna? Oh. Uh, the, the big one right there. I don't think the femur. Uh, Rick is looking. No, the nope, femur nobody, would be the leg. Nobody knows it. <laughs> the upper Rick, joint. Rick, can you the wake scapula. up and tell it's, us what this well, bone it's is? It's connected to the shoulder it's, bone and the elbow the, bone. So the what's the that? Bone. It's the sphincter. What? Like, which, which bone is this? It's the chicken wing. It's your bicep it's, would be on. It's it's the thing you guys don't have. It's your humerus. Oh! Ah. Wow. Ah. Nailed it. That nailed it. You, Going you, back to you being got, passed out. You got oh. us. So uh, the arm is uh, in what condition? So the the humerus seems to be uh, folded. At, yeah, at a pretty nasty. Uh, okay. It's not yeah. broken through the skin, though. So, uh, <laughs> uh, make a luck roll, Bello. <laughs> Jeez, I should just not say anything. Yeah, yeah thanks. <laughs> You're just really making this a better situation. Uh, holy shit, why is my luck so low? Okay, uh, no, I don't get that. Yeah, so it appears to be piercing the skin slightly. Oh. So, if he loses his arm, how much Frank's red hot and butter do we need? <laughs> oh yeah i had a buddy of mine uh fall out of a box car once and uh when we got to him his uh arm was pretty mangled up with it we, we were able to, to to fix him up real good he, he never had full range of movement after that i mean he could bend his arm down a little bit i mean i'm a hobo i'm not a doctor so i take his uh arm and remember that thing i did on the ship where i like brace my foot against his armpit yeah but that, oh, that wasn't yeah. an armpit that you were bracing it was a, against it was a leg oh it was your it yes. was my crotch don't don't so use I that i brace <laughs> i brace against his armpit and i pull okay. the arm it's not out. much better oh i think we should do a medicine roll on that one uh mine's first aid uh, that's something i found out about uh call cthulhu is all the first aid is for anything that happens on the spot medicine okay. is for uh oh yeah you're right convalescing yep. yeah so, so yeah, go i've, ahead. Got, a, I've first, got a good your uh, first aid got a good first aid first aid here we come 38 i made it okay. you've been aided just with uh just a regular success though huh yeah just a regular success okay so um, you, so you least... pull on it pretty well, and uh, you you think, as best you can tell, that you've got it back in place. I mean, now, for what... oboe medicine, it's pretty good work. Yeah. Now, was there broken skin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I make a, a poultice of um, uh, tobacco chaw and uh, mentholatum, and I put that on the skin. <laughs> And then I and wrap nice. it up. I wrap it up with a a, a, a dirty handkerchief. And, and uh, just to confirm, and saliva. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Saliva is incredibly healing. Yep. Okay. Uh, and I wrap it up, and uh, 
Uh, we use it in all of our chicken. Yeah, use it as a. Uh, oh. Well, I, I wrap up the uh, the wool so and I, that. I use the big kerchief to create a uh, a makeshift uh, sling. Okay. And uh, uh, sorry, Mister Poulet, uh, you're not going to be able to put your uh, your suit on again, fully on again for uh, for a while. <laughs> That's the keeper raising oh, his arm oh, in the no. excitement. Well, well, I, I, oh my lord, what did you do to hear my arm? Now, can I believe you would do such a thing? Why did you break my arm, Mister Boone? <laughs> the hell you're talking about? Everyone here knows that I I saved you. You say, sir, sir, look, I am in such pain and extremis, and I am now uh, defouled. I have uh, no suit on the upper half of my body. So, what are you wearing? <laughs> I hope a uh, law, I hope a union suit. I hope you're not like naked because nope, that means nope. you're pulling chicken out the of yellow your, your moist <laughs> crevices. Yeah, uh, I, I just, I just had chicken soup in the, the overalls over it. So I guess maybe I just have the overall straps back you, over my. You mean uh, late, later hose? My later hose. My Kentucky, my Kentucky later hosen. Okay, so there's there's a basically a big pile of molded fle- feathers sitting on the ground, and you're standing there. No, no, your... he didn't take it all the way off. He, no, he, he I peeled it down. I right? peeled it down, so it's still so the so second it's... and a lower half of me. I'm chicken from the belly button down. So you're yes. so it's flapping around your waist. Yes. Yeah. So I've got I've got the chicken bits. Wow, so you're like a centaur. Sort and he's, of he's still got his uh, chicken comb hat on. Yeah. Thank you. Which, which protected him off. from serious concussion when he was trampled, by the way. Ah, excellent. Mm, yeah. It's a helmet. Uh, does first aid give him any hit points back or is that something medicine has to do? Um. Yeah, we'll give him we'll give you a point back for no longer having a bone poking out of your skin uh, and the poultice. But uh, he'd have to earn the rest of those back uh, over the course of it healing. Because essentially, if anybody poked him in the arm with a stick, yeah, he, he's going down to his knees. Uh, I'm definitely not taking note of that. So the so to picture it, uh, in order to hold the suit on, he has to put the later hose and straps back on, which we can do very carefully. Take the sling off, put them on. But he's always going to have the wings dangling down, like brushing against yeah. his ankles when he walks. Uh-huh. I mean, he yeah. could he could one wing it. Yeah. Yeah, he could. Yeah, like the kids think, that. Yeah, I, I think what I'd like to do is take the chicken hands that are flea flapping and tie them in front of myself, sort of like you know a, a sweater that you've got. And so I just have this sort of chicken half suit sweater. What about preppy? Oh, chicken? and you also like a preppy have, chicken. You also a preppy have chicken. huge cavernous pockets formed by the wings that you could right. use in the future to fill up with. Uh, exactly. It's it's a you you uh, yeah it's useful utilitarian. I was about to say that, and then I I, I thought it, I thought better of it with my accent. That would go horribly. Uh, Boone, can you make one last roll oh. for me? Either natural world or intelligence. I'll, I mean, uh, edu. I'll take edu or natural world. Let me see what my natural. I don't think I have natural world. No, I'll do edu. Okay. You're an educated hobo. Uh, that is a hard, that's a hard success of 21. Well, you should bellow. You should probably thank old Boone then for making that hard success. All right. Cause it only had consequences for you. Was that, uh, to make sure my poultice were. A okay. You're poultry. Poultry. Your big brain (laughs) in it. That might've been a good poultry better than, uh, you, you, you put a few parsley flakes in there too, right? Yeah, yeah. We hobos, uh, you know, we know our uh, hobo lore. All right. Uh, so at least Bello is bandaged up, uh, though he's got a floppy wing. Uh, y'all, tell me what you want to do next. Well, isn't it nighttime? Yeah, it is nighttime. Uh, so, but we've. <sighs> Every time I say this, Michael, I'm going to glare at you. Yep. But we, we've got to find out what happened to Dick. Yeah, we got to find Dick. We have Dick to go out missing. and find Dick. Yes, it, with great just, urge, with great urgency. Yep. 
I heard that someone put their hands on Dick, and we have to find out who. Mm-hmm. And they, okay. Scott, they you just sh- you escalated. I didn't. I didn't escalate. You did that all by yourself. He did no, have. You he blame. did have some help. They put their hands on him, and they muscled him in. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I hate myself so much. Okay. Mm. I only have myself to blame. It, yeah, it does come down to your fault. So, uh, yeah, we, we tell you, Rutherford uh, and I tell you, uh, other guys, about, uh, you know, what we saw. Yeah, you did. We, put... told, uh, we told Kali about uh, Dick being shoved into a, a car, government car. What we think yeah. is a government car. I think, And I think y'all did that last episode, too. Oh, I don't. Yeah, I don't yeah. remember. Yeah, yeah, Michael. Either. You you put the stick in front of us and we're playing with it. Can can you cricket yourself for that? <laughs> <laughs> I could. I feel like you've been saving that well, up for like three weeks. <laughs> no, I just it, I've been saving it up for about three minutes. But yeah, oh, okay. well, I, I don't think there's any. I don't think there's anything we can do about Dick's uh, hard situation until the morning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I so I'm going to suggest that we go back to uh, Dick's place, okay. um, <laughs> where Dick should be. <laughs> okay, that's a good idea. Uh, he normally yeah, has a ball that, there. Yeah, that's what uh, that's what Rutherford was saying. Is maybe there's some some clues back at uh, back at uh, Mister. Uh, I forget what his last name is. Oh, he's got a last name. Know. It's something. It's something Bulgarianish. Yeah, I'll just call him Dick then. Fine. Yeah, there might be some clues. It's Feimer. Uh... F E I M E R. Oh, Feimer. Oh, it's... Wow. Yeah. Well, that's obviously different. All right. Well, let's uh, let's head back to Dick's then. There's no way to to actually try and chase Dick, right? No, they because took we off. don't know where he went. Yeah, they okay. took off Dick is completely it. gone yep. in a car. That um, was like. Three three episodes ago. Um, all right, so uh, let, let's let's head back to Dicks. You're so dumb. <laughs> oh my Fuck. god! We should at least tell the audience. So it, yeah, it, uh, Bello said that uh, his his middle name is In My, so his name is Dick In My Thimer. Thimer. <laughs> Thimer with an F. Oh, I thought it was Thimer. Oh, okay. <laughs> the names are all like they're they're compilations of real Los Alamos physicists. Okay, and I oh. named them. Yes, I, I did so not like. Mm-hmm. Oh, so they're anagrams. There was really someone named Dick Femer. Names? No, it was uh, Richard Feynman. Uh, Feynman. Mm. Oh, yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, so this was and, and, an and honest. You, error. And you chose to make his name Dick you, instead of just leaving you it chose Richard. Dick Femur instead. Wait, do we wait? Do we go other direction? Doctor Oppendicker. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, give him some credit. It's Oppenheiny. I heard Oppenheim and Dick worked really closely. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> they had the same name. Yeah. Mr. O- Open. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, all right. Michael, so, give the all right, over. off we go. We're, we're going back, back to, to Dick's house. Back to, back to Richard's place. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So when y'all arrive at Richard's house, uh, make a uh, who's got the lowest spot hidden? Oh, that's an excellent question. Uh, Sixty-five spot. Thirty-five. Hidden. Uh, oh, you mean the I... best spot hidden or the lowest? No, lowest. Okay, no, mine's pretty good. Me, I've, I'm probably me. I've got a thirty-five. Okay, I've got a fifty. All right, and uh, Bello, you've got the highest then at sixty-five. No, my, yep. mine's high. No. Uh, um, Rutherford's got an 80. Holy Ooh. shit, that's higher than mine. 80 or 70. Wow. Wait, All wait, right, wait. Rutherford, you and Culligan roll your spot hidden. Yeah, it's an 80. He's he's an egghead, he looks at things. No, and, I, and, <laughs> I rolled an 83. <laughs> oh, Rutherford. <sighs> All right, burn some does luck? this feel important? Okay, so you both missed. Okay, 
so you're kind of distracted. You're recounting everything that's happened in the last, what, what's it been, two hours? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Bellow's kind of moaning out in pain. Have you, Has anybody given Bellow the pills or did Joe take those pills with her? No, Franny, you have the yeah. pills, right? Franny pills. has the pills. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Right. Technically, you would have to have given him the pills. Otherwise, he would still be unconscious, right? Based on what the doctor mm. said. No, he's not unconscious. Not fully he's just, unconscious. Yeah. Just out of it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I mean, right. is is he mobile? Because, uh, you know, he's in pain. I don't want to snap him out of his um, pain management. Yeah, he's mobile. He's just, you know, he's making all, all right. sorts of silly. <laughs> it looked like Joe. the Weekend at Bernie character. Is yeah, that what exactly. Yeah, sunglasses yeah. on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, I'll be under one arm sort of helping the, to support him. Yeah, I'll, I'll help too. Were the pills she gave you pain, the pain management? Speed. I thought they no. were like to, they were to bring, bring him, him out of the anesthesia. They were to bring him out of the pain management to counteract we're gonna, we're gonna what need, she had given him. Uh, so we're going to need pain management of some kind once he's conscious yep uh so, so i'll guess go look in in dick's house for dick's got any, aspirin yeah i mean dick's got a whole medicine cabinet that he, that he lets have. me all right oh yep. okay really <laughs> he lets a kid into his, into his medicine. <laughs> no, he's, this guy is suspicious uh culligan who goes to the medicine cabinet well, I, would. Said, I, know where, culligan. Yeah. I know where the aspirin is all right culligan make another spot hidden thank you Let's see if you can you can get this one right. Ooh. Oh. I got a two. Wow. Holy crap. All right. So as you go into the me- medicine cabinet, Culligan, uh, you realize that um uh, Feimer always had a bottle of heart medication uh right next to the aspirin, and that that's missing. Um, it immediately makes you uh kind of suspicious he always kept that was like his backup pills he always had some with him and then he always had some in the medicine cabinet okay so i will grab the the aspirin and obviously note that and i'm i just want to look is there anything else that is obviously missing that I would be aware of. I'm wondering if I can ride that too for a little bit more Yeah, yeah yeah you should be able to ride that too um Let's see what. Um, sure, he had uh, described some personal effect of Feynman's that um, you you knew he was really attached to that would be missing in this moment. Sure, he had uh, he had like hair. What's it called? Like a paste that he would really like. He styled himself more than anyone I'd ever Real seen cream. in my life. And so, mm. yeah, so he had like real cream and he had like a really nice hairbrush made out of like ivory or something like it just it looked like it cost more than the house I grew up in. OK, perfect. So that's uh, that's missing as well. And then um, you also notice that uh, he was very organized. You kind of get suspicious in this moment that these things are missing. Uh, especially since he's gone, of course, and you start you start kind of peeking around his bedroom and noticing that things aren't certainly not thrown about, but they're not how he would have left them. So uh, the yeah, bed looks. Was, I mean, he was impeccably clean with everything. Right. So the bed looks like somebody sat in the middle of it. Um, the pillows are slightly disarray. Uh, there's a, a, a framed painting on the wall and it's not off tremendously, but maybe like an eighth of an inch, uh, which is definitely not him. And you start to realize that, um, there's nothing you can point at and say, oh, somebody rifled through that. But I, so many things in the house are off just a little bit and that's not something he would have kept all right so i will bring the aspirin back out um and i'm going to give the aspirin to boone because okay. to my mind boone is the medicine man the, the doctor okay. yeah i go and i'm going to tell you know boone and rutherford and franny all about it and i guess bellow but 
I still, to my mind, Bellow's pretty unconscious. Yeah, while how, while you're uh, up there, it, um, I I will have given him the pills. Does it, uh, uh, Kali? Does it look like he like packed in a hurry, like he was trying to skedaddle out of town? You know, I would have I would have guessed that he was packing in a hurry, but he's you know <laughs> he never like trashes his bedroom. He never makes big messes. He never leaves things rumpled like. You know, he's just he's the neatest person in the world. I don't know anyone even close to that neat. And everything looked like it was just like it had been done by someone else. Because I've never seen him make a mess like that before. Uh, Keeper, when uh, Rutherford and I, uh, when I saw him uh, being herded into the car, did he have uh, bags? Did that figure have bags with him? Uh, I don't think you would have you would have noticed. Okay. okay. So no, uh, the, actually. The other no. thing, uh, Rutherford, uh, since he works uh, worked with uh, Dick, he would know of his notes and where he keeps his uh, his notes and books and such like that. And so, r- with this news from uh, Cully, from Culligan, uh, Rutherford goes to where he would have had kept his work and his books and his notes. Uh, Because those would have been precious to him because he worked on them all the time and they were, they were, they were the most, would have been the most important thing next to Brill Cream in a brush. (laughs) And they're all gone. They're all gone. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is all gone. And when they're gone, are, are the drawers slightly open? Does it look like something was taken real fast by other hands or does it look like it was taken by his meticulous hands where things are closed and everything's proper? Uh, make a luck roll on that. Yeah, because I was just th- noting, like, he seems like the type of person who would keep his pens in exactly the same spot all the time and such like that. So, a luck roll. I missed it by two, and I can't Okay. <laughs> so, every everything seems closed and put away. It doesn't seem like it was done in a rush. Uh, everything's quite well put away. There is a note on the kitchen table as, or actually on his desk as you're, we'll, mm. we'll, we'll move it a little bit. It's on his desk uh, where all of his stuff is. And do uh, you want me to read it aloud to you? Please, yes. Yeah, it says, uh, dear friends, um, I, I regret to say that I've been called away on urgent business. The... Uh, Uh, Let's see. Uh, The projects I've been working on require my immediate attention. And I'm sorry to say that I would not have any time to say goodbye to you. Um, Please excuse my um, very abrupt departure from the theater this evening, as it was my wasn't my intention intention to alarm you. But my services at this moment are of the utmost importance. Please make use of the house, make yourself at home, and I hope to avail myself to you in the near future. Uh, Your good friend, Richard. Okay. Now, Rutherford, um, being his friend for ages and a college roommate, would have corresponded with him through letters. And so Rutherford's going to make um, a look at the handwriting to see if sure. it was done any differently from letters you see best, like if it was done under duress, nervousness, shakiness, basically a little handwriting survey. Yeah, let's, uh, what do we, let's see, let's call that, um, we'll, we'll give you that, let's call it an edu with advantage. Okay. Thank heaven for advantage. I'm drawing terrible, but I got it. Regular success. Okay. Regular success. Okay. Uh, it's definitely his handwriting. And the angle of the writing uh, suggests that it was done in haste. Uh, the only thing that um, makes you um, slightly suspicious is he mm-hmm. always signed everything. Uh, Rich- Richard Feynman, PhD. Um, even, even in a friendly letter to you and for him to leave that off at the end seems just a little bit strange. Um, but otherwise, um, everything seems in order. 
Okay, and the other thing is um, he would always write his letters in a, with a special pen. Like, uh, he would always write his notes with a certain pen and letters were written with a special pen. And I'm going to, was the, uh, was his letter written, written in a special pen, his special favorite pen? No, in fact, it, um, it wasn't. And you notice that his special pen, uh, we'll call it a special fountain pen. How's that? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. um, his special fountain pen sits in its holder at the top of his desk, right next to the inkwell. Um, it was certainly, um, available for him to use mm -hmm. and he could have used it, um, but he chose not to. Okay. And then the only other thing then is this would be kind of quirky, but, um, our host is incredibly intelligent. And this reminds me of that time, uh, where like in the POWs would, um, when they were on video, would give, blink their eyes and give a, a me secret message with blinking their eyes. That like really happened. So I'm going to investigate what he wrote and try to discern if there's any message from him under underneath by the way the letters are put together or anything like that, because he's smart enough to be able to, have, to, to be able to do that. Okay. And tell me how you go about that. What do you... How are you looking for it? Uh, Rutherford would sit, sit down with his egghead intelligence and start breaking it up like you would a puzzle and taking apart and looking at the first letters and then the way he would have remembered how he wrote a letter and then looking at his sentence structure. And for instance, like if it was short choppy sentences or long run on sentences and then looking at first letters, you know, second letters and things like that, because he would be able to do that. And just like the first word of each, like if it was short sentences, look at the first word of each sentence and put those together. Okay. Yeah. Um, make like a, that. make an intelligence roll. Okay. That's where, that's where we can do it now. Oh man, that's a hard success. Okay. So as you're looking through with the letter, uh, you notice that the uh, lines are, uh, in his typical fashion, each letter is a perfect height. But occasionally, you catch a letter that's slightly smaller. Like a purposeful mistake. Yes. Okay. Um, and um, not, no, not so much a mistake as just like um, if, if his handwriting was all in 12 point font, uh, occasionally there'd be a letter in like 10 point font, right? Gotcha. It would just yeah. be slightly smaller. And so you pull all of those letters out mm -hmm. and um, it, you put them together and uh, they spell the word abducted. Oh, man. And well so done, Rutherford. After writing, wow. that, writing that down, I, I quickly yelled at Cully. Hey, Cully, we have, a, we have a terrible situation. Our, 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 our host. And I, ho I hold up the paper. I said, he there's a there's a message in his message. He he's been abducted. Oh no! Tell me about how do we get how do we help him? Did he tell us? He said that we 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 have to get our friends together quickly. I uh, I don't think there's a, he had any other time to put any other message in here other than he was abducted and the pieces are coming together. The the person I saw with Mr. Boone pushed into the car and and the message here and just what you see gone and not gone and the slightly disorderly nature of the house he's he's abducted and could be in terrible danger i i believe it's the government and he's been taken to the science center we need to we need to get to the science center somehow we got to tell everybody we've got to figure out how we can help him and so i think we need to work on a plan to get in or getting credentials and this is where we have to search and, under, and think about any of his associates and people we may know connected to the science center who can get us credentials to get in to the science center. Would I know anyone there? So that's where Rutherford then proposes to everyone You're there. And he sure. says to, Fran, to the locals, it would be Culligan and Franny would be the ones specifically. If they know anyone in town who has connections to the science center is credentialed themselves and has any sway or input and or uh, even a more in a more nefarious way um you know people who are have other types of ways of getting into things um not rutherford okay. doesn't have any connections like that but perhaps someone else in our group does 
Uh, Franny certainly has low level access, right? We talked about that, Franny. Yeah. So it, it, is it in the same place? I mean, all of the science buildings are in theory connected, right? Okay. Like you at least need some sort of security clearance to get into the main part. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, I tell you what, this is probably a good place. Let's pause for a minute, take a break, and then uh, we'll pick up um, on the other side of it. Okay. Sounds good. Take 510 okay. and we'll see you all in a minute. And we're back from break. Michael, back to you. All right. I feel like we should put some sort of Easter egg in here to see if Emily listened to the episode. We should have something really atrocious happen to Joe. Uh, or, to, or to Bello. Uh, no, I'm here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm here. I've already been trampled. Yeah, yeah Bello's got a... I have a broken a, fucking arm. A really? broken arm with a t tobacco <laughs> chaw poultice. I've, I've had now traumatic memories of my dad beating the side of oh. a house which I chicken coop which I had to improvise because you guys didn't want me to have him beat me that's fine what was he doing he was taking the chickens and beating them against the side of the coop no he was taking a baseball bat to the chicken coop and I felt oh. that was like a good backstory to why Bello okay. likes chickens and rather than being beaten by his father I thought that was probably a better angle to go yeah. yep. that's definitely better yeah that's definitely is that better, better for our <laughs> comedy. Much, it's much better. Comedy. Is that? Yeah. I, I guess this means Jesus. we're not recording yet. Then <laughs> no, we're definitely recording. Oh, okay, yeah. great, fantastic, mm -hmm. wonderful. Yep. All right, let's just move along with the story then. Thanks, Rick. Are we coming back from break? Because you haven't so, done that yet. No, uh, I did come back from break. Yeah. Yeah. Did you really? Yeah. So he I'm came just... back. He came back from break like two minutes ago. Yep. Yeah. Uh, a minute thirty seconds ago, actually. <laughs> Can we do it again? <laughs> so we're gonna come back from break now. <laughs> come back, break. <right. laughs> it's a good job, Rick. Yeah, yeah. Come, come. <laughs> Your face is so bad. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so good. Uh, so I guess that could be the Easter egg, right? Yeah. So there you go. You can retcon if, the whole thing. Yep. So, uh, Professor, I'm good at uh, sneaking around places, so maybe I could be helpful in that regard. Uh, Boone, make a make a spot hidden as you're hanging out in the house. Oh, okay. Uh, it's just 48. Uh, da, 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 da. Just made it. Yep, I have a 50. Okay. As you're looking around in the house... You realize that all of these abstract paintings are quite a familiar shape to you. And you're surprised that it didn't dawn on you before. But hang on, and I'll draw it out for you. Uh -huh. Wait, I'm not going to use the menu that Keeper Ian made for us because it was too nice. All right. Um, and it looks like this. And... For everybody watching at home or not watching at home, it yeah, that looks would be like listening a, on podcast. It's an upside down field goal. Yes, yep. exactly. It, Thank it's you. an upside down Thank field goal. Absolutely, it looks so, like an upside uh, down field goal. So one one of the paintings is like that symbol on a white field background. Uh, uh, there, you notice that uh, a lot of the abstract paintings are actually oh. that symbol. And well, you'll have to give me a moment to jog my memory. And by jog my memory, I mean look in my character's backstory here to try to find. Uh, do you have that page of symbols handy? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for it. Uh, One, two, three, fourth row down, third symbol in. Was oh, this like the, the hobo? Yeah, hobo hey, you know nothing about that. Yep. <laughs> you know nothing about that. Can we roll to see if Bello knows the hobo alphabet? <laughs> uh, you'll have to tell me what it is, Michael. You can send me a. Oh, okay. okay uh, it it just in it. your in your hobo symbology. It one two three. It's the fourth row down and the third one. No, I, I don't have. I can't find the, oh, okay. the list. Oh, okay. And it means here is the place. Here is the place. Okay. Yep. Here so uh, that that symbol was also inscribed on uh, 
uh, outside of his house. Uh, oh no, outside of his house was nice man lives here, will give you work. Hmm. Oh, uh, what they got? War chalking? Yeah. Yep. So here is the place, is on the painting. So does it mean the place we're in, or is he trying to but, let oh. us know that there might be a trail of symbols leading to the place? That no, we... uh, but Michael said there was more than just that one symbol. He said there's other symbols in other paintings, right? No, no, no. I, no, I just all said of that, them that... In this one. Yeah, that uh, that that symbols were rep repeated in three paintings throughout the house. Oh, okay. In those three paintings, then um, is you there... guys aren't privy to that knowledge. Oh, never mind. Okay, yeah, yeah. don't have any idea what's yeah, like, going you know, on. Okay. Jeez, stepping all over my character's backstory, robbing me of my <laughs> rightful limited knowledge and. <laughs> Specific what education. Page, what page is that backstory on? Can't find it. The... <laughs> so I just kind of stroke my scruff and I'm like, I wonder what he means by this is the place, huh? I'll, I'll save that for later. I'll just, I'll just think on it a bit. Okay. Hmm. All right, and then y'all can continue on with your other interaction as you contemplate that. So yeah, so I want to say to Rutherford because with last last I heard you and I were looking at the thing, uh, his note. I want to bring it out and talk to Franny um, mm -hmm. to see if Franny has any ideas because at least in in my mind, you work with the government. So until I hear otherwise, my in my mind, you can help us get him. So I say, come on, Rutherford, we can go get Franny. I bet she'll help us. Okay, I go, uh, but I, I believe uh, uh, one other thing we can do is um, our host, I think he, he may have kept, and I'm asking now, this would be like a, did I know if he kept any so, um, any any weapons or anything in the house for self-defense? Uh, yeah, uh, not that you would know of. You're welcome to search, but... Okay, so uh, uh, Rutherford's going to do a quick search on where his host may have... Uh, put something like that hidden behind, like, you know, a bookcase or something like that in a clever fashion. Okay, make a luck roll. Okay. Rule, made it by a lot. 29. Okay. Uh, yes, as you're uh, searching around the house and you look behind a bookcase, um, you find a pretty uh, simple uh a uh, revolver. A dick gun. I thought it was a dick shooter. Wow. Oh. A simple Man. revolver. Crickets. Crickets. Yep. Crickets. Yep. You all deserve crickets. Let me see, and I'll pull up a... It should have been a blowgun. Okay. 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 <laughs> Might as well teach I'll middle the crickets schools, for you, y'all. <laughs> um, let's see: alien devices, monsters, beasts, and alien gods. Appendices. Latest. So while, <laughs> while, while you're looking up the uh, uh, the firearm, uh, Franny would have been. Uh, sort of standing in the doorway, look, examining the door to see if there was any sign of um, of forced entry. Um, yeah, and there isn't one. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. It is interesting. Let's see. Roll a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Roll a d eight. D eight. Five. One, two, three, four, five. And that'll give you hmm, interesting. A thirty eight automatic. Hmm. It's a James Bond gun.
Oh. I'm not really familiar with firearms or anything like that. Well, my character is, but I'm not. What is a 38? Picture, auto- picture makes- a James Bond gun. What makes it automatic? The, it's the one with the slidey thing on top. Uh, so Instead so of- when you fire, the next one comes into the chamber. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Hmm. It would be a, okay. uh, it would be an automatic Colt pistol. All right, Colt thirty eight automatic. Okay. So, all right. So now that you've got that, uh, okay. I want to go out and explain to Franny what we saw, what the note says, um, and I'm going to say, Franny, uh, grab ammunition. Do you think you can you can get us into <clears throat> to look for Dick? Well, that, that, that's a good question. Um, I, 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 I'm sure I would know the answer to that, but uh, the person playing my character does not know the answer to that question. <laughs> uh, that would, that would definitely be above your clearance level. Okay, uh, would I be able right. to go in by myself and like snoop around to see if I could find something, or are these places like, you know, far apart from each other where? You know, my lab is separate from any any sensitive material. Right, your lab is separate from any sensitive material, but you're certainly uh, free to try and make your best. To, you know, break in. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you're saying. Impersonate, it, yeah. get arrested. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Get merged with alien DNA and mutated. Yeah. Sure. Anything mm-hmm. you want. Okay. Yeah. Um, am I aware of any? place um uh, around the lab where it might be um you know there might be sort of a, a crack in security where it might be easy for me to um uh you know to sort of slide into um uh someplace that might have uh, that might contain dick you can make an intelligence roll <laughs> i see people shaking their heads uh, all right hey my first roll on the night and it's a fail. Yep. Uh, you, oh, wait, you're pretty convinced that it's. Let me check my intelligence. My intelligence is pretty it, it is not. This is EDU. No, INT. Yeah, no, that's. No, 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 no. no it's this... INT. Yeah, I made it by one. Okay. Good job. Um, you, you think that you you might be able to possibly impersonate some of the higher level scientists? Hmm. and uh, try and work your way into a better classification, but you don't know where on the premises he would be held. Okay. And that's not something that I could like bring someone with. I'd have to do it on my own, right? Right. Okay. Um, And do they operate 24-7, or is this something that I'd have to wait for? Well, I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Let's let's back up a few sentences here. Okay. I don't know. You're, You're the PC trying to figure this out. I'm not telling you you can or you can't. Okay. You might have an idea that's good enough that you could. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. Um, And do they operate 24-7 or would this wait? Is this a wait until morning thing for regular business hours? Uh, I I would say that it would not be odd for there to be comings and goings at all hours. That some parts of the labs have a, a sense of urgency about them and urgency to the research occasionally uh it, y'all get kind of all hands on deck um uh, directives to try and research one particular aspect you never know what you're necessarily researching in terms of the larger context mm-hmm. um, but they'll have you um, put aside your research and everybody uh, will research this one thing and then abruptly they'll cancel that and tell you to go back to what you were doing mm-hmm. Okay, uh, so uh, Cully and Rutherford, I I could try to uh, explore a little bit and see if I can figure out where he might be, uh, but it it will be a little bit dangerous, and I'd have to go by myself to do it. Now I'm certainly happy to do it to try and rescue Dick, but it 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 could be difficult. Uh, I don't uh, want you to get caught or, or or captured. We know that they're dangerous if they took him, and he had a note that says. 
that he was abducted. I don't, I don't want you getting abducted too. But I think this is, we need to do risk our own welfare for the sake of our friend. I, this is a friend I, I've had since my day, days of college. I, I, we, need, we need to go do something now. And if we can be any help to you, Franny, by going to the facility with you as a distraction even, uh, we, we'll do that. I have no problem. I could talk to any of the scientists. I am well-versed in, in chemistry and, and nuclear science and Maybe. Think, he's talked he's taken me to visit before with him i only get to stay stay in the outside though i don't get to go in but i at least went in the lobby so they've seen my face well, I, I believe we can come up with a ruse franny and perhaps culligan can be my assistant and i will go in as perhaps uh someone who needs an aid as a new society scientist undercover and you can bring me in to meet with one of your contacts in there and we can then do some questioning uh it probably wouldn't be too too suspicious then culligan will be my my uh aid to help me walk along because perhaps i i i can't do that and, uh we can come up with uh maybe even a w- wheelchair or something like that okay that that sounds fine to me it's it's really too bad that uh that the chicken man has has fractured a wing because boy a, a big sale of wonderful chicken would would be a lovely distraction for all those scientists to sort of clear <laughs> out some some rooms and get people out to have drink. out to have lunch and then then in the what bathroom for a while idea. afterwards and that's that the, really would have been did wonderful. I tell you how delicious that chicken was franny uh, i I did hear that uh, although I'm not sure that Boone would agree with you. <laughs> and, if, and if they all have to make a roll for digestion, they're all going down. <laughs> oh, did everybody forget to give the chicken man his pills? No, I told you, yeah. I gave I gave you the pills. Oh, did, like, did, yeah, as soon as we got you home, had the pills. Yeah. yeah, you gave me the. But did you give me the aspirin? Nobody gave me the aspirin. Yes, we gave you the aspirin too. And the aspirin. Yeah, dude, we're taking care of you. Did we really have the, ch- the ch- chicken man near nuclear national new nuclear secrets? <laughs> And and if I remember right, I was the one who um, got you a doctor. Well, I hear you all looking for a little chicken man's assistance, and I'll tell you what. Can, can you do this accent while you're in pain? I can tell you what. I Don't. would happy to help. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, never mind. Go back to yep. your regular accent. No, no, it just I got a tender, tender, tender little chicken wing tender. Here. I got a, <laughs> I got my tender chicken. You see, and uh, uh, I'm more than happy to uh, bring up my chuck wagon here and uh, 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 fry us up some uh, finely good chicken and uh, says steak us myself in front of the establishment for a sale. You see, I've already contacted a few of those folks at Los Alamos uh, in order to uh, see if I could be their chicken purveyor and uh, supply their cafeteria with And my, as a matter uh, of fact, you have a meeting tomorrow. As a matter of fact, <laughs> you know, I do recall uh, it must have been that stampede knocked a few uh, screws loose, uh, but uh, it's coming back to me now that I do have a, an appointment with one of uh, the Los Alamos uh, uh, representatives uh, in order to see if we could establish such a thing. So maybe I could pitch uh, a taste and try. And, and, you know, since since you only have one wing, uh, it, you might have to use Boone as your hands while preparing and serving. I guess Boone doesn't eat the chicken. I could use an extra pair of hands, although with one hand... I'm not getting anywhere near that goddamn chicken. (laughs) I'm afraid that just touching it is going to make me loosen the caboose. Sir, are you implying something about my chicken? My chicken is of the highest quality. All I know is uh, I shat out barely digested chicken bones. Well, you tell me what else you had in the day there. Uh, beans. Mr. I had beans and chicken. <laughs> well, well, I think we know the answer then, don't we? There were no chicken bones and them beans. There were... <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to eat the bones, Mr. Boone. Yeah, it's, uh, I, in fact, oh, they, that's it was a mistake I made. Not, not to in not fact, to come to Bellow's defense, but 
I, I do think the bones are supposed well, to remain outside here's your the body. quizzical part. I, I, thought the, I thought the drumstick uh, bone was the best part. Here's the quizzical part. There were no bones in that chicken, Mr. Boone. <laughs> really? Oh, that was boneless chicken. I didn't realize. That was boneless chicken. Oh, my chicken. God. I passed some chicken of my getting weirder bones. and weirder. <laughs> What do you, what do you mean? Call this? Which means your chicken did more damage to me than I at first thought. It made me, <laughs> made me pass my own bones. <laughs> now, do you have a name for those pieces of, of chicken w- without bones in them? <laughs> that, that seems uh, like they, an opportunity to, for, for, for a new <laughs> marketing strategy uh, of some sort of, some sort of name of a, of a, of a, of a small piece of chicken. Well, it, it, it's it's so funny you say that. I have been tossing a few things around with the PR folks over at uh, the Poulet Factory, and we call those a uh, bellow bites uh, because uh, uh, it is just a beautiful thing to have in your mouth. Oh, see now, oh, now that that's sounds amazing terrible. That as the CEO <laughs> of a, a corporation that has a factory location. <laughs> That you're out slinging chicken uh, and a, and a and PR true your, team saying true to your roots. I, you, I find that admirable. You, you would think that the public relations department could could find someone else to to hand out chicken at a theater, <laughs> especially to children like that. And, yeah, I was going to say when Cully hears that he had a little bit of he had a bellow bite in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, I, I don't think I feel too good anymore. <laughs> Uh, uh, you see, no, 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 uh, you, you misunderstand me. Uh, my PR team is really just made up of, uh, my brother, uh, Bruto Pole. Uh, so, so your choices were, were <laughs> Bruto Bites or Bello Bites? Oh. And, and you went yes, with, no, with it's Bello Bites is clearly and, the way to go. And, and what were the rejected names of, of these, uh, chunks of chicken? Uh, the rejected names? <laughs> It's a it's a good question. It's a very oh, good thank question. You. Yeah, um, uh, I have a whole list that I'm going to be able to get you here in a bit. Uh, 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 now remember, it's... he was recently trampled, so give the man some room. <laughs> give him some room to think. All right. Well, we, Rick, we can we can it, come back to this. Is Rick speechless? I think he is. This is something that doesn't happen very often. Holy crap. This is like the first in 40 episodes. <laughs> Rick is speechless. That could be the that could be a title. Nice. All right, let's move on before he gets a speech back. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna go to the uh the lab and create a diversion um and then try and get uh Rutherford and Culligan into the lab. I guess it's tomorrow, right? Because because uh, uh, that's when Bello okay. has his appointment. Um, wh- what are we going to do tonight? Get some um, pretty well well earned rest. <laughs> yeah, I think we need to pre- pre- prepare for uh, any situations we might come into there. So we should uh, uh, anything we feel we may n- need in this situation going into this p- p- place. We have to be careful. Uh, what we bring in, but we also need to be uh, uh, careful of these people who have abduct- abducted our friend, and they are dangerous. Mm-hmm. And what I, I mean is perhaps some self self defense if you, you have any. Well, I I don't know if it's a good idea to, to bring weaponry into uh, a, a lab like that. It's uh, that seems to uh, that may be a a sign that we are not on the up and up. Well, not to mention, that's a good point, Freddie, but what they're soldiers, they've got great big guns. I've seen them walking around. They've got things on their backs. Hey, you bring in a couple of pea shooters, you're not going to do anything to them. That, that, that's that's a, not this. It's very wise, that, Cully. But, but in a situation where, where we may be the objects of, of, of abduction, uh, I think it's wise that we do so. And this would be coming from uh, Rutherford's paranoia about the whole government yeah. system, which he is. Uh, yeah, adamant. and I. I'll say, Rutherford, I understand where you're coming from, but think about it from the other side. What if they find you with a gun and we don't even have a chance to, to look for them because they see a gun on you? Yes, you uh, might not be able to get in too far if if uh, yeah. if you set off any sort of alarms right away. I, I think it might be more prudent to bring uh, some investigatory equipment that would be easily uh, uh, that would easily look like scientific equipment that would help 
in your in your investigations and trying to find clues while in there. Like a, like a ray gun. <laughs> uh, do, do you have one of those, Rutherford? Because <laughs> that would be very interesting. I've been working on one. <laughs> Rutherford takes out his tinfoil hat and says, I'm going to go get my ray gun now. Yep, it's made out of a can of beans. And <laughs> I see you've been old, studying uh, my great uncle. Yes. <laughs> An old mixing machine. Uh-huh. Uh, Y'all do the... not want to be in the vicinity when he fires that ray gun. No. <laughs> Uh, Culligan, are you going to go home for the evening? Or are you spending the night? At- no, that was I've my question. A- Should we all stay Whoa. stay the night? I got house. a cot that uh, is in uh, that's set up in the basement for me because okay. I can't go home pretty frequently. I'm glad you um, said basement. Okay. And you might yeah. be the target of abdu- abduction if you're if they know you're associated with him. Uh, oh, I don't think anyone knows. I even where I stay in the basement, I found the coolest corner of the uh, basement because it gets so hot here. Please don't so, say he he keeps your relationship quiet. <laughs> no, uh, you just said it like he, he wasn't going there, and and you just did. <laughs> Everything you say about this makes it creepier and creepier, Scott. <laughs> Special place in hell for you, Franny. Special how do you, place in how hell. do you know what he has in his bathroom? How do you know what his bedroom <laughs> looks like? I just, I don't like this relationship at all. Is there, is there a towel that says Culligan? Uh, is, are, is, does he call you the Culligan man? Ooh. He's, he's, he's helped keep Culligan safe. That's why Culligan is so protective of him. For the it's second fun. episode in a row, I'm just going to propose that we retcon the whole season. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Okay. It's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Uh, could we keep Bellow though? Because I feel this character has a lot of backstory to get into. Oh God. Uh, we can keep him as a main I, dish. I do not want to get into Bellow's backstory. <laughs> I don't either. I don't really want to get into any of y'all's backstory. Um, all right. Really, mine is all about the carnival. That's loads of fun. So, Clowns and freaks and yeah, well, okay. All right, so uh, who's staying at the house tonight? Are we all staying here, or are we going back to our? I, uh, our I own... normally sleep outside. I mean, I I'd like to sleep under a roof. If that's okay. I don't need a bed or anything, but it'll be you know keep me out of the heat. Mm-hmm. Promise, yeah, I, I won't take nothing. I, I no, we we very much trust you, Boone. Yeah, those New Mexico evenings are quite cool too. They're not mm-hmm. they're definitely not hot. Um all right, then if everybody's going to go to bed, um as as I'm going to uh, wait for everyone else to go to bed. Oh, okay. And, and then I'm going to go shit? over <laughs> No, nope, I'm going to go over to that painting. Mm-hmm. Uh, take it off the wall, look okay. behind. I'm going to take the painting out of the frame and see if there's anything on the, you know, written on the other side of it or okay so uh the the painting itself was stretched on canvas but oddly uh, enough as you take it off the wall it has a paper backing on it which is quite unusual for a painting and as you i'm just going based off what you said here as you remove the paper backing uh, there's a whole load of sketches on the mm. back side of the painting. Okay. Uh, and they, the, uh, the sketches would seem to be uh, diagrams for a building. Okay. I don't, uh, the reason I did that is I don't want to give away the hobo code mm-hmm. by drawing attention to it, but I'll make up a story about how I found these somewhere okay. in the morning and let everyone know totally fair and that was on that was just on one of them did you check all three of them uh i thought there was the code was only on one no the code was on three different pages. oh i'll check all of them then. yes yeah, yeah, yeah and so with each one uh you uh you you discover kind of a new set of basically blueprints and each of those blueprints uh, builds on the others, and uh, you can tell that 
there seem to be seven layers or uh, stories involved to this building. Now, there's no seven-story building in town. Yep. Well, this this would be outside of my education level. So I'll just yeah. know, well, obviously, this is important. Yeah. Uh, I'll go into, like, the, you know, a pantry or something, close the door, and I'm going to sleep on top of it just to make sure, sure know, as nothing could. happens to them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're going to sleep on top of the paper. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that nothing gonna... happens to them. Oh, like no. a dog. Did you okay. eat chicken? That won't be good. It's greaseless. Weren't you paying attention? It's greaseless chicken. Yes, but it's not you... greaseless boon. Okay. Yeah. I don't sleep on top of them. <laughs> no, 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 no. Too late. You're already sleeping on top of the paintings. We'll Christ. deal with that later. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, 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 so, <laughs> yes, Bello. I would like uh, uh, Bella would have uh, insisted that we bring his uh, his vehicle, uh, his uh, food service wagon, uh, up up in front of the establishment, and he's going to sleep in that. It's uh, you know on the side of it, you just have a uh, in big words, uh, Bella Labaca. Oh, okay, boy. do you want to describe this vehicle for us? Don't know what that means. It's it's a chicken. <laughs> It's a, it's 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 the beautiful boat is what it is, um, and it uh, and it sort of looks like uh, I'm trying to think. So this is like 1940s, uh, so this would look like it's some type of uh, 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 a deformed uh, bus contraption uh, where the back half uh, looks like a chicken coop, and uh, uh, it has a panel door. Like uh, that, you would, you would, you, you could, you could hook and, and open, and inside, I'd have some equipment for cooking, uh, and then uh, I would drive, drive it up front, and it'd be a little, maybe airy for me to sleep. Yeah. Where's all the chicken? Ideally, on ice. <laughs> on, on ice, I have blocks of ice in there. It's, <laughs> it's kept cool. It's kept cool. Okay, so is this a a large vehicle? Like, is it? Like, are we thinking like a container truck kind of apparatus or like a station wagon? Uh, no, it's it's a big size vehicle. I can, I've been carrying this chicken around from for a while in Kentucky. It'd probably be like a small bus, I would think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. We call it the boat, La Barca. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, wow, I have so many questions. <laughs> oh, it puts me in mind of um, Buckminster Fuller's uh, Dymaxion car. I think if you look that up, it's like this uh, space age. It's from the time period, space age looking streamlined bubble. Hmm. Oh, yeah. It looks that that would be a perfect, that would be great. In fact, if it was just if it was like that, yeah, that looks great. All right, it'll it'll be like that then. Okay, so what I'll do as the uh, ultimate kick on Joe is uh, is everybody going to bed now? Does anybody have anything else to do? Uh no, I don't have anything. Okay, so I, no, I'm just gonna go curl up on my pallet and. Uh, Rutherford's going to stay uh, uh, vigilant for a while by the door just to see if there's any cars going by the house or shadowy figures walking about. He's on, he's going to be on alert. Okay. And so as y'all all do that, um, what we'll do... Uh, oh, my goodness. Yes, Bello. Yes, Bello. Yes. We should probably put a link to that in the description. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Oh my goodness. That is right. something. Yeah. Um, you can all choose a skill that you've used so far in this campaign. And you can roll on it. I am gonna choose first aid. See if I can and bump the, up and my the, first aid. The goal here is you want to miss. You if you miss, miss you get to improve the skill. So you don't want to do that's right. Last time you don't want to roll, and you can't do your characteristics just skills correct just skills all right i did spot hidden and i missed okay uh i made it i got a uh 67 oh, on what yeah. wait uh, wait six. did you did you miss culligan on your spot hidden 
Like yes, you went above it. Spot hits is a thirty-five, and I got a fifty. Perfect. Yeah, That's what you miss. want. That's what you want. Okay. Um, so roll a d10, Culligan. All right. Uh, five. Okay. So as your uh, uh, as you use your spot hidden and get more investigative in your research, you now have a forty in spot hidden. Ooh. Okay. Okay. I didn't I, make... Oh, go ahead. Uh, Boone, go ahead. I have a uh, a fifty first aid, okay. and I missed it. So okay. a, a D ten. Yep. Eight. Okay, so you add eight to your first aid, oh, and nice. I believe medicine is linked with that, or it would make uh, sense that it is. No, they're two separate things. Uh, right, but we'll we'll call them linked for this. So I'll I'll let you add four to your medicine. Nice. Okay, that makes it five. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a huge percentage like a, increase. I the one. That's great. I uh, so I, I I chose my occult role. Oh, did nice. You, did you make your occult role? You, what do you mean, like now? Did you use occult? You have yeah, to that's how I got the heads. greaseless chicken. No, it has oh, to be. oh, yes, okay, yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot about oh, that. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, what else have I rolled? I've been like that in Persuasion. I'm going occult. Okay, um, go occult. So I, I rolled, I got a 79, so I missed it, and then I rolled a 7. Okay, so add 7 to your occult. All right. I went for my horrible stealth roll when I tried to stealth on stage, and I rolled a 24, and of course missed it because my stealth is terrible. And 6. I rolled a whopping 6, so it goes up 6 points. Yep. So whopping 26. Pretty good. All right, Franny, what you gonna do? I got a rock. Oh, you! I'm oh. terrible at rolling dice. I rolled a twelve. Oh um, my you god! Were you rolling <laughs> low and low when you I was rolling on high. stealth. That's awful. What was your st- what's your stealth? Thirty. Uh, All right, I'll um, give you a point of stealth. You're now thirty-one. <laughs> All right, thanks. Uh, this is I, where you I got a pity other- point. You did. That's where you look for your things that you have your one. Like I have, I have a one in French. Roll on on your French. Yeah, I didn't want to cheat it. All right, we'll figure out where Joe spent the night next week, and um, and I think this is probably a good place to pause for the pause for the evening. Okay, sounds good. I was not at all prepared for that. Um, I think we made some headway with the puzzles and stuff. That's I was yeah. Say, yeah. Boone found some great. Stuff. I am super looking forward to seeing those um, those drawings. Yeah, uh, I have many thoughts on that. That's cool. And then uh, we figured out he was abducted. That's kind of neat. It wasn't a happy happy thing. And uh, no, but I, we moved a bunch of stuff forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then we know he's at this, the the science building, the laboratories. So that's good. And we have a connection with Franny, so we. And formulate a plan. All right, cool. Wow. And we will call it. You're muted, Boone. <laughs> I said, Bellow, that's even better. Right? Yeah. Wow. All right. With that, we are going to call it. Thanks for <laughs> joining us tonight. <laughs> what? <laughs> you guys are terrible at this. So this is the point where we end the show and I say a thing and then we say goodnight. Remember that? All right. This is the 41st time we've done this. Go ahead. (laughs) (laughs) You think you'd get it by now. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks for joining us tonight. Find us. (laughs) You guys are terrible. (laughs) Find us online under the library.com. On Instagram under the library. Twitter under the LIB. On YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. For me, for Michael, for Scott, Rick, Chris, Wayne, and for the absent Emily. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you next time. Oh, that looks like an ass crack. Oh shit, we weren't we weren't out yet. Wrinkly ass crack. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best show ending ever. <laughs> and Emily's not here and it just falls completely <laughs> apart. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
That was so funny. We still haven't wrapped yet. Nope, still recording. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. <laughs>